that, like the biblical concept of uh, the body of the church, how um, the body is in its whole one thing. It's made up of many members, many parts. He's been working with the wire for a long time and has done tons and tons of little tiny objects. So he thought it would be interesting to get objects that were meaningful from each of the students and faculty and then put them all together uh, kind of as a giant symbol of the body of Christ. My contribution was my violin. I've played the violin since I was about three years old. Uh, this is my friend Moose. He's a plush animal. Um, he originally came from uh, a gift shop at Yellowstone where my girlfriend adopted him. Uh, these are my sandals. They are pretty worn. I wear them everywhere. There's all these random things that you don't understand, like a, an army canteen or my violin or someone's hanging windmill, but they all form together to make this, this body. Um, but then around the exhibit, there is also photographs, close-ups of everyone with their objects, and just everyone wrote out a description on a card of why that object was special to them and why they had chosen it. And people have different interests. So, you know, some one person, you know, was interested in their tattoo, and somebody's teddy bear, um, a ring that they had gotten when they were 12. Someone who's, who had been given a hat years ago and still wears this hat, even though it's got, it's shredded. A lot of times they don't see the body first, but they see that they're looking at the individual pieces. Or maybe they see the body first and they don't see the individual pieces. It, everybody comes at it at a different point. I want it to be a drawing that can feel like it's been pulled off of a page um, and you can hold this drawing. And I like that idea that it's tactile, people can touch it. People, and you know, most museums you can't do that and I invite people to touch. Then I go to the wire, I start bending it. Wire makes curves, it makes wonderful, you know, everything has these nice curves, and so I see that as very much the art. Once I finish a piece, I go through the, the rusting process, I, I put it down on the paper, I have to put a, a metal paint, and then there's a patina that goes on after that, that dries. The patina then is it, wherever it puddles, wherever it um, connects to the, the metal piece itself, it, I end up with a painting that is these beautiful rust colors and the, the patina is this green and so the greens and the reds and the oranges, they just all kind of sparkle together. It's very two-dimensional in some senses, but in another sense it's made out of a three-dimensional medium. It's easy to go to a gallery and just look at a painting or, you know, a gallery, you know, full of different images. It's easy to just kind of spend 20 seconds or less viewing a particular image where I would, I think, um, if I had to view it again, I would really try to challenge myself to spend a lot of time really trying to absorb um, the work as a cohesive whole. The installation can go from one gallery to the next, and it, it's never exactly the same thing. What I show, and what you'll, you'll see on the video is not exactly what it'll look like in the next venue. I don't want to say I'm ever really finished because we're going to get new students next year and um, those students have stories and um, so it doesn't end. And I think that's kind of what's interesting about the show. The show isn't going to end, it's going to keep going. And um, so it's as fluid as the body itself changing.